Hey guys, it's Nikki in the show with Chicago Tribune, ChicagoNow.com. And guess where I'm at? In LA. This is something completely different. They flew me out here, WGN America. I got to talk to some of the actors from the new show, Underground, which premieres March 9th on WGN America. Stay tuned for great interviews and some information about the cast. I would love to talk to you about how you came up with this concept to focus more on the Underground Railroad. What were you doing? What were you watching that said, I want to make a show about that? You know, it's actually not that exciting. My sister was like, you should make a TV show about the Underground Railroad. And I was like, you know what would be a good title for a TV show? Underground. And I never come up with a good title, so I was like, yay! <laughs> and then I, I went to Joe, and we started researching, and we kind of just found that, like, you think you know, but there's just so much. And the more that we researched, the more we looked in, we were like, we can't make this stuff up. But this is so, this is right for a television show. And that's kind of like how it started, very simply. Joe, when you were talking on the panel, you mentioned that it took you guys three years to come up with this concept. At the first try, what did you find out what was wrong that you needed to tweak and come back and do? I don't think there was ever anything wrong. I think it was selling it to other people. Yeah. I think that was part of it. Because Misha and I you know, started off on the same page and we wanted to be bold and we wanted to do something that people hadn't seen before. It's very hard to sell that in theory. So I think when we wrote the script, all of a sudden the light went off in people's heads and like, oh, now I get it. We've seen the occupation. This is about the revolution. We wanted to see these people laugh and love and sing and dance and have all of this, you know? So I think that where the pain is there, it's built in. It, it's slavery, that's what it is. But I think that opening up this world and really exploring all these characters, there was no, you know, you'd go where the characters take you. So why uh, focus on this kind of project? I know that there's a lot that you could have been behind, but why wasn't it important for you to do this kind of project? Well, I judge every project as it comes in. Uh, is it special? Uh, is it creatively a great team? Is it a story that needs to be told and hasn't been told in this way? And uh, this series met all those requirements, and I was inspired by it and wanted to do something creative with the show. Are you excited to tell this story at such a sensitive climate? I mean, that we're in. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll inspire people because um, it shows that even in these most adverse conditions that uh, there were people who went against the odds and, and, and chose to break free. Let's talk a little bit about your character, Kato. First of all, I noticed immediately by watching the episode that your character tells a story by his makeup, his face, yes. already tells his background a little bit. Yeah. And it's a fiery one. It, <laughs> man. It's, you know, it's it's an amazing role to play, let's just say that first, uh, because it is a character that has so much complexity, you know. Um, he is a character who is yes and, you know. He has his own personal intentions, um, and at the same time, he's gonna do whatever it takes to get those things, you know, to get the goal. He has lost a lot. Um, he has been through a lot and he's carrying a lot of pain and throughout the series we get to go through that journey with him and hopefully uh, you know you, you may hate him but you also may respect him by the end of the series which is the important part. With Elizabeth it's about um, reevaluating her her situation and, and putting her energy into something that matters if, if she can't have the thing that she always wanted, then she's, she's got a lot of love and a lot of energy to put into something else and, and she sees the plight of these people and uh, you, how could you not want to help? Amira, your character, whoo, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, right, we got a fan, I need to take a moment. First let me ask you, are you pretty a, a new actor, people are, are, are they really f familiar with her face? Most of, most of my history has been in theater. So this is the biggest job I've had in TV and film. And so to get the privilege to work with this amazing cast, I mean, Christopher Maloney, are you kidding? Now, I'm not trying to give them too much away because I've seen some of the episodes and I was emotionally like, okay, y'all are stressing me already. And it's just, I've only got to two, okay? You guys are stressing me out, okay? So let's talk about Ernestine. She is works for you know one of the families in-house so tell us a little bit about some of the 
the ups and downs that you're going through with this role? You know, you, you wake up in the morning and my mind is constantly on what are the needs of the master and the mistress of the house and how to keep my children alive. And so that's my driving force is survival and the survival primarily of my children. And that is really challenged by this generation. That's why this is such a dynamic time because this generation is saying, I no longer want to survive, I want to live. And it's on the, the brinks of a revolution. So it's really terribly exciting to be a part of this time and to be a mother during that time and not really understand where they're coming from and what do you mean you don't just want to survive? I feel like I understand that as an auntie in my own life, I understand that with my own mama, you know, and so it makes for some really exciting art. Well, now that we got all the deep crap out of the way, let's talk about some of the fun moments that you guys at least had on set. Um, I heard it was hot. And what do you mean by hot? What exactly? <laughs> I'm gonna make me blush. You knew you weren't there to tell tell a history lesson. You were still there to do your job, which is to 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 act and tell a story. But it was just wrapped up in this very important subject matter, and I, I just felt as though everyone was kind of vibing off, uh, you know, not to get too crazy about it, but it was like, wow, are you, are you it, it was always unspoken, at least in my opinion, it was like, are you feeling what I'm feeling? And so everything was on the table, you know, we had a scene together and it, it was not written as, a, it was almost a, I am questioning her about something. We don't even know each other, we're strangers in this teleplay, and it became a sexual moment a, a, a you know we were all going i don't know what that was but i'm sure i mean that's what it it was true it was true whatever no <laughs> let me get <laughs> yeah it was y'all still hanging in there i mean how y'all yeah, doing <laughs> Woo. Yeah, i'm like yeah. it's a long day as an artist i try to do is find um find things i can relate to in the characters i portray you know it's interesting in my approach with this, the stories that my mom would talk about with my grandmother. She would go to work, my grandma, my grandmother, grandmother worked in New Orleans as a house maid. And my mom would watch, you know, how, you know, she worked in a white house and she would watch the way they would treat her. And my mom always talked about growing up how, you know, her mom had to be there more for those other children than she could be for her own. And so my approach with Rosalie and the Ernestine character was very similar to that of this sense of longing. You want to belong somewhere. You want to belong to a family, to a community, and yet you don't. The, the beauty of this show is that there is no straight streamline to any one of us. We all have twists and, and curves. Yeah. And Every time you think we're gonna do something, it's something else. You know, uh, I remember Noah made a few choices that I was like, okay. You know, not that I disagree with it, I was surprised. I was like, okay, uh, you know, there's, I don't know him the way I thought I knew him, you know, and I had to explore something different and make different choices. But that's the best thing because, I mean, we're getting something new thrown at us on a regular basis. And when I can go to work and do something new every single day. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to get comfortable in your craft. I mean, that's no. when it's boring, honestly. Yeah. I mean, and Underground, honestly, I think stretched us all as actors and pushed yeah. us in ways, you know, it stretched us all past these limits that we thought we had. And honestly, I mean, that's when you do your best work is when you step outside your comfort zone. They're styling. I see styling and profiling. <laughs> Hold on. Don't hurt them now. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> One of the things you said the challenges was making it more contemporary. And I know in this time that we have a lot of naysayers that's going to say, look, we've seen the slave story. Let's not do this. Come on now. How are you going to pull them in and reel them in in the first couple of minutes? You know? In the opening, if you're not hooked, something's wrong um, with the vibrating visceral beat of the song that we chose which is Kanye's black skinhead gives it already an unfamiliar sound um, and visually I wanted it to be very striking like it was almost kind of noirish for me and really finding a way to just kind of be bold out the gate because with anything you got to grab the audience 
and make them want to commit and sit through however long you're watching. So it was definitely making sure that we hit it out the gate, the energy that we wanted to convey, because this is really a, a somewhat of a action adventure. Um, and we wanted that. We didn't want to sit in the old antebellum South um, and deal with what we've seen over and over and over again. And for me, I think those naysayers, whether they show up and realize it themselves, they're going to hear about it. And then I think they will hopefully catch up. I know a lot of people are looking forward to it March 9th on WGN America. I think you did a really great job thank you. of adding your swag. Thank you. That thank Anthony you, thank swag. You, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for talking to me thank today, though. Much. Those dimples are going to kill them. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about Outsiders. Yes. Let's do that. So your character, well, what, what is the term for your, your, the, I guess the region in which you guys are at. Uh, we're we're ferals. We're yes. uh, we're mountain people. Mountain. We um, we're a family that's lived off the grid for the last 200 years. Basically, what happens is a coal company comes into town and says, you know, the land that these people are living on is very rich in coal, and we want to blow it up, and we need you to kick them off the mountain. I saw a little spark in the first episode. A little bit. A little spark. <laughs> Just a little there. A little bit. So. We talked about how that might develop into a friction or a challenge between her family, your family. Yeah, it, it's basically, you know, it's kind of a Romeo and Juliet thing. It's it's forbidden. You know, I come from a place that's not supposed to really have anything to do with the people down in town. And she comes from a place where she's not really supposed to have anything to do with me. And we get very interested in each other. And we take a lot of chances trying to be together. You're on Outsiders and you're playing Sally Ann. Yes. Now, your first episode, without giving up too much, you're working in a market. Yes. One of the markets that the Outsiders come in and kind of... Yeah, the Pharaohs, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they come in and wreck shop, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. They are making a run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they don't come off of the mountain often, but they do for things that they can't necessarily make up on the mountain. So they're making a run, and they make a run into my store. Okay, and so how is your character going to develop? Because, I mean, the first, you, you didn't really have much to say looking at the first episode. So I know we're kind of peeling her layers, but she seems very reserved, and, and there might be some relation. A little bit of romance. The point of my character in the midst of all of these ferals is that I do live and work in a town of out of work coal miners. The ferals are not coming off of this mountain, so that creates hostility where I am because the people around me need jobs. The ferals aren't leaving, so that's keeping jobs out of my town. My brother is an out of work coal miner. So that makes it that much more forbidden. You do also see the evolution of her because she does start to get into blush and, you know, letting her hair down and trying to come into her own. So that was that was a really uh, cool experience for me to be able to um, flourish this character and make her uh, her own person. Well, that, that's funny that you mentioned the hair because on the first episode, Kyle's character said, how did you do your hair like that? You know, so her hair is good. Protective styling <laughs> okay. is what that is called. He don't know that, <laughs> but I we do. <laughs> Outsiders premieres when? On Tuesday, oh. January 26th. Very soon. Very, very soon. And it's like, it feels like forever. I, mean, I don't know, you got, do you, got we? The, you got the, you got the. I don't know, whatever. Well, we have all this. Oh, y'all was stressing me out, okay? Stressing me out. Snapchat. What you know about the snap? I'm, I'm trying to learn. 